everyone. Today, I am super excited to present to you a recovery case study. This is about a site that my team and I worked on for four months. I'm going to go over the steps that we took to help recover this particular site. So let's just dive right in. All right, guys. In the beginning, this site was hit with a core update on May 25th, 2023. Now, this is when I first heard from the client. And my advice right now at this particular moment was to tell this particular client to wait to work on their site until the correction algo rolls out. Typically, when we have a Google update roll out, there is always a correction algo that rolls out behind it. And if you start making changes on your site, you won't really know what's affecting it. The client did make a few adjustments. My team did not. And the site did recover. Now, if you want to know exactly what the client did or the type of adjustments that they made, you need to check out the blog post that's linked in the description of this video. It goes into further detail about what changes were made to recover from the core update. I heard again from this client on October 19th when it was hit with the spam update. And my team and I actually got to start working on the site on October 26th to help it recover from the Google spam update. So let's dive into exactly what happened and when. All right, so here are the main key facts. On May 25th, 2022, the site lost 70% of its traffic. On June 26, 2022, the site appears to have recovered. On October 19, 2022, the Google spam update hits the site and the site loses 70% of its traffic again. All major keywords dropped out of the top 100. That means they were currently ranking in the top five spots. They dropped out of the top 100 from ranking. So it was completely obliterated. The site has since made a full recovery and even gained 10% more traffic than what was typical. The site is currently averaging about 310,000 visitors per month, and the site has over 400 pieces of content. The site is an affiliate e-com or e-commerce hybrid. So it's kind of a combination of both. Some of the challenges that we were up against is there is a large amount of content that had to be edited individually. And like I said, there was 400 pieces. So each piece had to be edited multiple times and each piece had to be individually edited. The site was continually spiking and dropping out of rankings as we worked. So it was almost impossible to know what was or wasn't working. There were many website content changes that were very tedious and it was very easy to make a mistake. The site had multiple issues that needed to be addressed, what, which we'll be discussing here in this case study. There was AI content on the site. I'll talk about a little bit more about that in this video. The Google Algo updates in general were a huge challenge because we were going through updates as we were making changes. This is what it looks like in the rank tracker when your site is hit with one of the Google updates. You can see that some of the keywords will still rank and some of them drop out of the top 100. In particular, you can see that one of the keywords that was in first position remained in first or second position. It went up by one once I started tracking it. It had a couple of the larger keywords still ranking in first and second position. However, the majority of their main keywords dropped out of the top 100. So this is what it looks like. You will see some of your keywords still ranking, but most of them will be out of the top 100. Now, some of the gains that you see within this image is because we were testing at the time that I took this image. There were keywords still ranking in the top first and second positions. It's just the majority were out of the top 100. And that's what it looks like when your site has been hit with one of the Google Algo updates. This is what it looked like in Ahrefs. So you can see the steady climb of organic traffic within the site. And then you can see when it was hit each time by the Google Algo updates. And this is what it looks like no matter what Algo update has hit your site, you're going to see a significant decrease in traffic. And for this 
particular website, it was a 70% decrease. So audits and research, I'm just going to go over at a glance and mention what tools I used and what type of auditing I was doing. However, for the full explanation of research and audits on this particular site, you need to check out the post that I'm linking to in this description, because in the post, I went over the audits and the research and talked about what it is that I am looking for. So I did an Hrefs audit, I did a site bulb audit, and I also did a SERP analysis looking for changes in search intent. Now, most of the audits didn't turn up valuable information for this particular site, which is why we're doing this at a glance and it's in the post. So let's talk about the backlinks audit because that is something that was really important for the Google spam update. First of all, this particular website was dealing with negative SEO, which means we found some exact match anchors of their keywords. A competitor was sending negative SEO and they were attacking some of their most important exact match anchors. When you're doing the backlinks audit, you also want to pay attention to comment links or blog type spam backlinks. Those are something that you will see if you're being affected by negative SEO or spam type links. You also want to look for non-relevant backlinks. And I'm talking about topically non-relevant. Do you have backlinks going to your site that is not topically appropriate for your topic. You want to pay attention to those in your backlink audit. You also want to look for a large percentage of high authority links. Now, these are the links that are high authority that everyone's looking for. They want them for their website. However, you cannot have a large percentage of high authority links and still do really well through the Google spam update. So what I'm looking for are abnormal large percentages of backlinks that are hard to get that this particular site probably wouldn't have a lot of. And overall, in general, you're looking for over-optimization of the backlinks. You're looking at the anchors. You're looking at where the backlinks are coming from. Now, for this particular audit, I like to use the Hrefs tool, and you can use the filtering that they have to filter out and to really drill down and find the backlinks that are causing the problem. And this is the type of backlinks that I was looking for when I was trying to recover the site from the Google spam update. So we did create a disavow file for this website once we identified that there was negative SEO, there was a large percentage of high authority links, and there was a large percentage of exact match anchors. So I identified the links by the URL or the domain. You can do either in your disavow file. And remember, not all spammy links are dismissed by Google. So spammy links, Google has said that they will dismiss them and not count against you. However, I want you to take note that that is not true for all spam links. Sometimes it will get past Google's filter and you're still going to need to do a disavow file. Again, not all authoritative links are good for your site. So you really want to pay attention to do you have guest post type of high authority links? Do you have links that maybe you have a high percentage of that you really shouldn't have, or it skews the value of your site? Once you gather the list, you're going to submit it via a text file. And the timeline on this was super interesting you can see a bump in traffic going up two weeks after this particular file had been submitted and accepted by Google. Moving forward, we're going to talk a lot about over-optimization because over-optimization, not only within backlinks, but also on the site, you really need to pay attention to for the Google spam update or for any other type of updates. For meta titles, tools can easily over-optimize your content, and I want you to pay attention to what's actually in the SERPs. Do a search, check their meta titles for your top keywords. Is your meta title similar, or are you using the exact match keyword twice where they're using it once? 
But pay attention to this. What type of domain are you comparing to your site? Is it branded or is it exact match keyword or is it partial branded or partial keyword? Because you want to pick the competitor that is the same type of domain that you have. You do not want to con compare apples to oranges here. So what is in the SERPs and what is already working? And I want you to compare this against the optimization tools that you're currently using and what they are suggesting as your meta title, because it's really easy to make a mistake. And the biggest mistake comes from comparing your site to sites that are not like yours. And by that, I mean the domain name. Is it fully branded? Then only compare your site to fully brand, branded domains. Is it exact match keyword? Then you want to compare your site to competitors that also use exact match keywords. When we make a mistake at this point, it's because we're comparing ourselves to the wrong type of competitor. All right, so let's go over headings. Headings one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever headings you're using, that's what we're talking about. Your keyword should not be in all of your headings. Go check your site right now. You should not see your exact match keyword in headings one, two, three, four, five, or six. SEO is changing with current Google algo updates. The algo updates that actually changed how we optimize our site started two years ago. It, they are specifically attacking on-page SEO at this point. And what used to work no longer works. So let's talk about a quick formula that you can use on your own site. Your exact match keyword should be in your meta title and it should be in your heading one. Your exact match keyword should be in a few of your heading twos, but not all of them. Your exact match keyword should not be in headings three through whatever you're using. So it's three through six, three through seven. I mean, headings kind of keep going here. So your exact match keyword should not be in your headings three through six if you're following the guidelines of it being in your heading tag and in your meta title. Your main content, let's talk about optimization of the main topic. So keywords are changing and being used less and less. So let me explain that a little bit. Semantic SEO is making a much larger appearance than it ever has. And so how we use our exact match keywords has changed. Some sites rank without using the keyword in the main content. Remember when we used to put the exact match keyword over and over two to 3% within our main content? We now see sites that are ranking very well, not even using the keyword in the main content or using it very sparingly. That is a big change compared to how we used to do SEO. Be careful using optimization tools, any of them, even though tools that I love to use can easily help me over optimize a site. Now, part of the problem is on page factors are taken and then combined to give you a result of having over optimization or a perfectly optimized page. The tools are weighing the factors one by one and not combining them for an overall over optimization score. For instance, interlinking is not acknowledged in any of the optimization tools currently. So the suggestions that they give you are not weighing interlinking before giving you those suggestions. And it's always good to check the SERPs if you have a doubt about what optimization is already working really, really well. All right, let's talk about interlinking. This is actually one of my favorite talk topics that I will probably talk about a lot more. You want to be careful using exact match keywords in your interlinking. Gone are the days where we can use exact match keywords over and over and over in our interlinking. This actually helps lead to your site getting caught by a Google update. You want a very low percentage of exact match anchors in your interlinking. Remember, interlinking is combined with other on-page elements to give us our overall optimization score. And it's very easy to to over optimize one of these elements and your site get caught up in one of the various Google updates. Let's talk about alt tags for a second. So 
all tags actually have very little to no rankings boost. At least it's a rankings boost that I can't see with the naked eye, right? I've done a ton of testing. You can alter the alt tags. I don't see it giving a big enough boost that we can actually register on with ranking tools. So if you must use your alt tags, use exact match keyword only once if you have to. I actually prefer not using my main keywords in the alt tags, but I use the alt tags for my secondary or long tail keywords and not exact match large keywords. <clears throat> this is not the place to use keywords repeatedly. You really want to be careful with your alt tags and not causing the over optimization to occur in your alt tags. On pages combined for an overall score. So if you're over optimizing one of these elements, you can very easily get caught up with over optimization. And let me digress for a second. Over optimization has changed since the Google Algo update started rolling out two years ago. What we consider over optimization has completely changed to what we used to consider it two years ago. Let's talk about eat. Eat with two E's. It's ridiculous to try to say, but eat. Let's talk about it because this was a factor with this particular site. So the site was missing individual author pages. We changed that by adding individual author pages, updating the author's bios and the backgrounds to be a little bit more hard hitting. And we talked about the specific years of experience they had in the industry because they actually had a lot of years of experience within the industry. We actually listed specific years in the industry, specific high points or achievements within the author's bios. And we listed what makes them an actual expert, what we found compelling. Do they write for other industry-related articles or platforms? So we talked a little bit about that. On their individual social media platforms, we actually added the website that they're writing for. The results are, if you were to do a search for these particular authors, you would understand semantically that they write for this particular website and they have done so for many years. And not only have they written for it, but they ha actually have the knowledge and the spirit experience behind it to be accredited to help their EAT score. Now, EAT specifically is not being targeted by the Google spam update. However, we wanted to address this to help future-proof the site for future updates that it might get hit with. So let's talk about optimization at a glance. So when I first took a look at the optimization, I use Surfer SEO for this. I took a look at my client scores and compared it to their competitor. What was interesting to me is my client was scoring an 89 for their optimization, whereas the competitors were scoring a 62 for their optimization. And their competitor had the top spots while my client had dropped out of the top 100 because of the Google Algo update. We would probably expect to see the complete reverse when a site has been hit and assume they don't have proper optimization, but that wasn't the case for this particular site. The entities were well done. The articles were well researched and well written and well optimized. So that wasn't an issue here. All right, so I talked about what had to be updated on the site, the updates that we started making. Now let's talk about the test. So I was able to come up with a hypothesis of what I suspected was causing the site to be hit with a Google Algo update. And what I did was I picked 20 URLs that were badly affected with the update and systemized my changes to those 20 URLs. So at this point, the disavow file had been completed and submitted, and we had already been way past the two week timeline of it taking effect. I then picked 20 URLs that had keywords out of the top 100, so they had been badly affected, and I made all the edits that we discussed. We also had to remove keyword mentions within the main content if it was over-optimized, and we compared 
compared it to competitor sites to get the baseline of what it should be. Remember, in the optimization tools, it said it was optimized perfectly and didn't know that it had been over optimized. We began the work on the 20 year. You, so we started and ended the work on the 20 URLs, and then we tracked to see what would happen. And this is the results of what happened across all 20 URLs. This is a an image of one of the URLs, but it's exactly what happened to all 20 of them. So you can see the original content was released sometime in January of 2023. The site was crawled, the content was indexed. You can see that some of the impressions and click-throughs started to go up, but then fell, bottoming out. The green arrow indicates when we started the work on that particular URL, when it was actually crawled. And then you can see that after it was crawled, impressions and click-through rates go up. You can see this, this was a successful test across all 20 URLs. And then we had our complete game plan of what needed to happen to make changes across all 400 pieces of content. Mm -hmm. So then we had a final sprint where all of the posts or pages that had not been updated were updated as quickly as we could. So all edits were completed on February 7th, 2023. The focus then shifted from making sure all the posts and pages were actually crawled. And I noted in my notes that majority of the pages were crawled by February 16th, 2023. And we saw a full site recovery by February 19th, 2023. Now, what I want to make note of is, yes, the majority of the pages were crawled by February 16th. The pages were being crawled randomly, a few pages here, a few pages there through the days. So it wasn't that all of them just got indexed or re-indexed on February 16th. They were steadily re-indexing the entire time, but the majority of the changes were crawled by February 16th. And that's three days later when we noticed the site completely started to recover. And then this is what it looks like when the site has accepted all of the changes, the pages and posts have been recrawled, and you know you have hit a home run. This is what the ranking tractor tracking starts to look like. You can see all of the green arrows. And also I waited on this picture until it had been accepted and not moved for several days. Here is another image showing you that by February 21st, we had users had increased over 222%. Sessions had increased over 224%. New users had increased over 225%. So on the 19th, we started the climb up. Every day, the site improved better and better. It's not a complete straight line up. Did make large gains day after day once the start site started to improve. And then this is what it actually looks like when it improves. So during the lull or the down period, the second down period that you see here is when we were doing a majority of the work. What I want you to take notice of it are the lines that are now above the 300K impressions. So it took about three or four days to get above the 300K impressions. And before the site was hit with any of the updates, the site was had impressions of about 100, over 161,000 a day. Whereas now, since we've made the improvements and since it's recovered from the update, with all of our hard work, impressions are now over 340,000, give or take, on average, every single day. And this particular website was earning eight to 10,000 before the Google Algo updates. And now the site is on track to earn $21,000 a month since my team and I have made all of the changes and the site has completely recovered from the Google Algo spam update. What I want to reiterate is the combination of over optimization on the site that I talked about in this video combined with the over optimization of backlinks is what caused this particular site to get caught up in the Google spam update. By making changes to on-page and off-page directly, we were able to recover the site fully.
So I use the systemized approach to address this particular website. And I want us to take note that Google updates will continue and they will continue to get more intense as we go along. They certainly have become more intense in the last two years. It's time to future proof your site. So if your site hasn't been hit, Go over this video and make some of the adjustments that I've talked about in this video. And then what can you expect from me moving forward? A whole lot more of Google recovery case studies and also smaller videos that talk about small things that you can do in between the Google updates to help future proof your site. If your site has been hit, you can contact me via my email address that's within the description of this channel. I do offer full consulting and SEO work on sites that have been hit by the Google Algo update. So if your site has been hit, there is hope. If your site hasn't been hit, pay attention to the tips in this video. Go make some changes and good luck and to your continued success. I'll see you guys in the next video.